morning seekers and welcome to the end of our week. I know it's only Thursday, but tomorrow's a holiday. It's Good Friday, so no school tomorrow. So today is Thursday, April 9th, 2020, and we are ready to move on to another exciting day of distance learning. Of course, Alistair's gonna come in and get in his spot. Go ahead, buddy. All right, let's see. Where do I want to start this morning? I wanna start off by talking about how great our chat session went yesterday. I know we had some video uh, sound glitch issues towards the beginning. We got most of that sorted out with the video link, I think. I know we still had a couple of hiccups, but for the most part, it went really well. If you showed up, oh, Alistair, it's okay. If you showed up into that video chat at any point, even if you didn't say anything, or even if you got kicked before you could get into the kazoo, whatever it was, it keeps a record for me of everyone who logged in. If you showed up at all, I gave you a record for it, okay? So, don't worry about if it kicked you out or if it glitched or froze on you. If you even made it into the meeting, I got you. If you wanna shoot me a message just to confirm that, you can. But I promise, if you showed up in the group chat, I've got your name written down, I've got your grade written down. So great job for that. If you missed it, in the video description, I have posted a link to the Generation Genius video that we watched as a class on the human body systems. And I also posted a link to a little interactive quiz that you can take. You don't have to play live with the teacher like Kahoot. You play it solo. And if you do that and send me a screenshot or a picture of your score, I will give you credit for that science grade as well, even though you didn't join us yesterday. So if you missed our video chat yesterday, you can still get that science grade by following the links in the video description. All right, what next? Okay, something I wanna talk about today. You have a three day weekend ahead of you. And there are a few things this week that I'm taking definite actual for a real score grades on. And I have them listed here. The first thing that you needed to send me at some point this week, some of you have done this, some of you have not, is send me your acrostic poem. So if you haven't done that yet, I want you to make sure you get that to me by Monday. That was your assignment for this past Monday for ELA. So if you haven't sent me your acrostic poem, make sure you do that before the uh, end of the weekend so you can get your grade. Make sure you have completed both of your decimal assignments in the team program. You only know about one of them yet because the second one is actually in today's list, but there's a total of two decimal assignments for the week in teams. And then there was also that cooking with your family science assignment in teams as well from Tuesday, I believe. Yes, from Tuesday. So the acrostic from Monday, the decimals from Tuesday and today, and the cooking science assignment and teams from Tuesday. These are the things that I'm taking grades on for the week. So I need you to make sure you get that to me. If you are having issues with internet access on this, I will be calling you if I don't get your grades submitted and I will read you the questions over the phone and you can answer that way. So don't worry, I'll find a way to get a grade for that for everyone, even if you're having trouble with teams. I think that's only one person though. Everybody else should be good to go. All right, so that's what I want you to keep in mind as you move into the weekend. Don't let the weekend get away from you without at least doing those things. All right, and kind of on that same note, if I haven't heard from you yet at any point in the week by the end of today, I'll probably be giving you a call just to check in on you, okay? So be looking for that call if I haven't seen you turn in any assignments or had any activity on anything yet this week. I just wanna check in, make sure everybody's doing okay, and make sure you don't need my help for anything. All right, let's move on to some kudos, shall we? I am going to reassess the full week's leaderboard situation for your interventions at the end of the weekend, like I always do before Monday morning's video. But for now, I wanna give you an update on who's in the lead. So our top three Lexia participants are in first place, number 19. In second place, number 16. And in third place, number three. We have an all girl leaderboard for Lexia right now. Great job. Boys, come on, you gotta catch up. Get busy. Now for Moby Max Reading Stories. First place is number 10, excellent. Followed closely by number 17. And then number seven is in third. Great job getting those intervention minutes in, guys. Love it. 
I hope some more of you try to catch up to them. Don't let them beat you. I want a good competition going on here. You never know what may win a prize. Just saying. All right, also want to give some shout outs. As of end of the school day yesterday on Wednesday, these are the people who have turned in their team's assignments to me so far. So, for turning in their first decimal assignment, I have it from the following numbers. If I haven't called your name, it has not been submitted to me yet as of about three o'clock yesterday. If you've done it since then, I probably have it. So I've got, so far, number two, number four, number six, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Great job. If you uh, haven't done that math decimal assignment, make sure you don't forget about that this weekend. I had six people turn in their cooking science assignment so far. Number four, number six, number 17, number 19, number 20, and 21. Excellent work, thank you guys. All right, I think that is all of my kudos. So, so proud of those of you who have been keeping up, staying on track, but remember there's still time to get it all in. All right, let's move on to our creature of the day. Switch gears a little bit. We haven't done an aquatic animal for quite a while, so I went ahead and pulled an aquatic animal from our list. This is one of um, probably the favorite type of ocean animals out there, the shark, but not just any shark. Our creature of the day is the lemon shark. And you're gonna notice in the video some different adaptations that lemon sharks have from most sharks, especially, um, you know, like the great white or some of those larger sharks that hunt in deeper waters. The lemon shark is really well adapted to hunting in shallow water, and they kind of school those little fish up, those schooling fish in the shallows. They school them up into little herds, and then they just gobble them up once all of the fish start moving around all over the place. It's really cool to watch how they outsmart the fish in order to catch an easy lunch. So be sure to check out the lemon shark. The link will be in the video description. Love a good ocean creature. I think us Floridians all do. All right, moving on. Let's see what's next. You have no ELA work in your packet today, so you have a very easy day as far as ELA goes. All you need to do is do your reading for 20 minutes. Do your 30 minutes of your intervention, either on Lexia, Moby Max Reading Stories, or Mind Play. If you're having trouble getting into those apps, let me know. I notice a few guys haven't been signed in yet, so if you're struggling, please, please, please reach out to me. Get me on Teams. Call me on my phone. Send me a text. Whatever you need, I want to help you get in, all right? I want to make sure that you guys are staying on top of it. And then the only other thing you need to do is go listen to the Harry Potter Read Aloud. I'll be posting chapter three today. So make sure you go check that out. It's starting to get really good, you guys. All right, let's talk about your math. That is your packet work for today. Now we're still working with decimals and we're working with representing decimals in different ways. On Tuesday, you kind of did the opposite of what you're doing today. On Tuesday, you were asked to write the word form of the decimal. Today, you are being asked to write the standard form. And if you don't remember what that is, the standard form is just when you write the actual numerals, the, the numbers themselves. So let me show you what your page looks like today. It's right here. And it's this half here, writing decimals in standard form. And you can see they give you two different types of a decimal. They give it to you in word form, one and six tenths. And so all you would do is you would write the numbers that go along with that right here. And they give it to you in expanded form. Six times one, so that's your ones place value, plus five times one tenth, that's your one tenth place value. And so you're gonna complete this sheet, flip to your answer key in the back and either check yourself or have a family member check you. And once you feel like you've got this down and you're good at it, what you're going to do next is you're gonna go into Teams and you're gonna tackle that second decimal assignment I was talking about. It's also called the same thing as your worksheet. It's called writing a decimal in standard form. It's super quick, it's only five questions, and it's multiple choice. You don't even have to type anything. I made it as easy as possible just to check to see if you're understanding this or if you still need a little help. Let me give you a very quick review on how to do this, just a quick refresher. If you are given the word form as something like five and nine tenths, 
Anything in front of the word and is going to go in front of your decimal. So that's why we have the five in front of the decimal. The and represents the decimal itself. Nine is the digit and tenths tells you what place value it needs to go in. And this is the tenths place value. It's the first place value after the decimal. Let's try another one. 47 and two thousandths. 47 is before the word and. So we're gonna start with the number 47. For the and, we're gonna put our decimal. Two is the next digit that we're going to write, but we've got to look and see where it goes. It's two thousandths. So that means the two needs to end in the thousandths place. So we have to leave one zero open for the tenths place, one zero open for the hundredths place, and that two will end right here at its place value location, the thousands place. Now let's look at how to do it with expanded form. In your worksheet, they didn't give you your parentheses to make it nice and neat. Um, you can draw your parentheses around those multiplication problems in your packet though, if that helps you. It certainly helps me, but I went ahead and put it in on my example for you. So if the expanded form is two times 10 plus three times one plus seven times one hundredth, this is how you would write it. Two is the digit that you're going to write, and it needs to go in the tens place value, which is, makes it go right here. So that two is actually worth 20. The three is the next digit you're going to write, and you have to look to see that it's gonna go in the ones place value. So when we combine these two, we get 23. 23. Tens place, ones place. Then our next digit we know has to come after the decimal because it's not a whole number. It's being multiplied by a fraction. So that means it's gotta come after our decimal. So we're gonna put our decimal. The digit is a seven and we can look and see it's gotta go in the hundredths place value. So that means I've got to skip the tenths place and put my seven in the hundredths place. Okay, one more example. Six times 100 plus nine times one plus four times one tenth. Six in the hundredths place. And then it goes to nine in the ones place. You notice there's nothing in the tens place, so I have to leave that blank. Then I can put my nine in the ones place. Then I can put my decimal because everything else is being multiplied by a fraction, so it's less than one. So there, that's how I know to put my decimal. And I know the next digit I'm gonna need is a four, and it has to go in the tenths place, which is right after my decimal. 609 and 4 tenths. Okay, so that is how you do that. If you need help on that, you know what to do. Hit me up in Teams, whatever you need. I'm here for you guys. All right, so you're going to do that. And then if you remember earlier in the week, or I think maybe it was actually last week, we had that quadrilateral project that got copied wrong and it was a big mess in the packet. Well, your other math quadrilateral project copied wrong as well, of course, but that's okay. We're gonna roll with it, guys. That's what we're doing here. This is all about being flexible and rolling with the punches. That's a good idiom for you, rolling with the punches. So your packet was supposed to print like this. You're supposed to have this on one blank page with nothing on the back and this on another page with nothing on the back so that you could cut these out. If you can reprint it at home, reprint it at home. I'm going to put the file in Blooms, in our Blooms app, so you can reprint it. If you can't reprint it at home, don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. But if you can reprint it at home and you would like to, feel free, reprint it, cut your cards out, and just practice sorting them. This is a skill you're gonna need to know for sixth grade, so that's why I'm trying to expose you to it. Uh, but I'm not gonna take a grade on this or anything, it's just for practice. So if you can do it, great. If you can't do it, no big worry, don't worry. So that's what your quadrilateral sort is. If you have questions, give me a shout. And then finally, the only other thing you have to do is just a quick five minutes on your Moby, Moby Max fact fluency to keep those multiplication facts sharp. All right, and finally, your daily challenge. As you know, Sunday is Easter, 
So if you celebrate Easter with your family, I want you to create a happy Easter card for a family member. Maybe one that you normally get to see at Easter, but you don't this year because we're all kind of in self-isolation, we're social distancing. If you don't celebrate Easter, that's okay. You can make a happy spring card and do the same. Send it to a family member you haven't had the opportunity to see in a while. If you're lucky enough to have all of your family with you right now, you can still make the card and give it to that family member that you're at home with and I guarantee it would absolutely make their day. So, there are all of your assignments. You have no assignments for tomorrow. You have the entire day off. You have a three-day weekend. So what I want you to do, what I hope you do with those three days is I hope you just relax. I hope you get to just take a good breather. So set a goal to get all your schoolwork done today if you can, because there is nothing like the sweet, sweet feeling of not having a to-do list hanging over your head. If I can help you get that goal accomplished today, you let me know. All right, guys, I'm gonna get going so I can go read some Harry Potter and get that posted for you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you show love and kindness to everyone you meet. And more than anything, I hope you remember that you can do anything because you are made of stardust. Bye guys, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend.